Okay, Bricks people, so today I just wanted to do a very quick tutorial on an easy way of creating background textures with SVG um, using the Bricks class system and this uh, free tool over here at Pattern Monster, which is absolutely brilliant. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to start with a blank page. So I'm going to add a standard section in there, and in that section I'm just going to add uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a rich text. I'm going to grab some Bob Ross Laura Mipsum and chuck that in there. So we've got something to work with. Uh, and I might even make the first line a heading uh, just to make it use a little bit more space. Okay, here we go. Some very basic copy in a uh, text rich text box inside a section now what we're going to do is have a background texture on this section here so the easy way to do this is go to your container sorry go to your section and we want to create a new class in that class we just I always name my bricks created classes with a b dash just so I know that these were created in bricks it's just easier for me to identify so I'm going to call that b dash bg dash pattern double dash and we're going to pick a pattern up here so let's go to uh, stroke and just do two color for now and have a look at this and I've got a waves pattern here for example so I'm going to click on the waves pattern uh, we're going to call this waves so I'm going to call this BG pattern dash dash waves maybe call it waves one just in case we've got multiple waves that we're going to do all right so BG pattern dash dash waves one hit the enter key and we've got a class Go into my style tab, CSS, root, because we want to target that element. And we're going to go down here and make sure we set our first color to be black, fully transparent. So all zeros here. Let's see our second color, we want to set that to white in this case. Uh, use hex again so it shows up as FFFFF, um, nice and easy. Then we know everything is correct. A little tip here, if you don't set this first color to transparent, there's a strange thing happening with these patterns where on my uh, PC, um, the patterns work beautifully where the first color is actually transparent because I'm actually using strokes, not fills. But on an iPad, the first color becomes your background. Why, I don't know, but just as a tip, make sure this first color is transparent. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then down the bottom here you can download or you can copy to the clipboard. What we want is the CSS property. The SVG will download the SVG element. Uh, we want the CSS property. So we click on CSS, copies it to the clipboard, head back to our class here and drop that in. And we can see immediately we've got our pattern over here. But it's not exactly what you want as a background, right? So you can muck around with your uh, colors in here. I prefer to do it as a completely opaque white or black, whatever you're going to do. I've got a dark theme, so I'm basing this on white at the moment. And what we're going to do is if we look at this, I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit on this. Uh, whoops. So you can see it a bit more. Ah, oh dear. So that's as far as I can go. Okay, let's have a look at this. Maybe I can use, there we go. Just using my uh, mouse wheel to zoom. So if we look at what we've actually got copied here from uh, Pattern Monster, our CSS is a background image with the URL um, for an SVG. Now this, in this particular two color uh, pattern just using the stroke, there's only two things we need to worry about. One is the scale. So it's on a scale of two by default. If we change it to a one, you can see our pattern changed up here. If we change that to 0 0.6, our pattern's changed again. So that's a very simple way to scale. So let's leave that on 1, um, and we'll change it to 1, I should say. And the other one we want to worry about is further down here. We're not worrying about fill, because we're not using the fill. This fill is completely um, uh, transparent, which is what the 0 is here. We're using strokes on this one. So if we head down to further down here, we can see our stroke width and our stroke there, which is 
hue, saturation, lightness, and alpha. So the hue doesn't really matter because we're not using, we're just doing black and white. The saturation is zero, which means there's no color. Uh, the uh, lightness is 100, which means it's white, zero is black, and our alpha is one. So if we change that alpha to 0 0.2, we can see over here our background has gone, uh, has blended more with the background because it's actually got a lower opacity. If I turn it to 0 0.1, don't even know if you can see that in the video, you can barely see it here. If I change it to 0.5, it's visible, but probably too much. So I reckon around, say, 0.15 works for me with this. And I've got a bit of a texture in the background. Okay. So that's the first one we're going to do. Now, let's just duplicate that section. And what we're going to do is get rid of this. So we have no, no um, background image, and let's create a new one. So let's do a B dash uh, BG pattern dash dash, uh, and let's figure out what else we want. So come over here. Again, we want to use, uh, actually let's use the fill. So we fill with two colors. You can use multiple colors. I'm just showing you with two so that it's easier for you to set up, but you can certainly pick multiple colors if you want to. So let's have a look through here and see what kind of patterns we've got that we might like. Uh, let's pick, what have we got here? Don't know. Okay, this one looks pretty cool, this hexagon. Let's click on that, and there's our hexagon. So the first color, hex, black, fully transparent. Now yellow there, click on that, hex, we want that to be white. And this is a hexagon, so I'm just gonna copy that name there and call that uh, pattern dash hexagon, we'll make it all lowercase so it matches other stand. We might have multiple hexagons, so let's call this hexagon one. Okay, go root, down here, and copy our CSS. Paste it into here, and there it is there. Now, this time, we told it in the pattern here that we wanted to use a fill uh, pattern, not a um, stroke pattern. So let's come back here, and in this case, we look at our fill. It has the HLSA with an opacity or a um, alpha of one. Uh, the stroke, let's look at the stroke. Stroke just says none. So there's no stroke. So if we change the opacity on that, let's change that to say 0.2, too much, 0 0.15, 0 0.1, there you go. So we've got opacity at 0.1. We can see this hex pattern in the background here. Let's change the scale on that to one. That looks a bit weird. So let's change that to 0 0.5. So we've got a bit different pattern there. You might want a huge, let's change it to five. And we've got this huge pattern in the background. Uh, you've also got rotation in here somewhere. So we rotate um, 25, we've rotated it. 45, we've rotated it. So I don't think you have to do this with DEG. I don't think you need the degree in here. You don't. In SVG, it's just a number. So I've actually rotated this pattern to make it a bit different. So you can play around with these scale, rotate, um, the don't touch the height, etc. Uh, or any of these other coordinates and change around, play around with your stroke and your fill and you get the different properties there. So I'm going to do this one more time and I'm going to show you another uh, potential use of this. So let's say we like this, but it's um, not quite doing it for us because we're going to use this on a light background. So let's go to section here and we're going to set a background on that and we'll pick a ooh, maybe this uh, yellow color. Now we can hardly see that texture in the background. Don't worry about the text, this is just for a demo. So what we want to do is we want to create a dark version of that. So what we want to do is grab the code that we put on this here. I might chuck that into a notepad document. Let's chuck it in a notepad document so we can keep that there. 
I'm then going to copy the name of that class and I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to take that class off there, create a new one, and I'm going to call this dark. So all about it is a dash dark on the end of it. Um, and then we're going to get our rule from here again, paste it back into there. But what we're going to do here is we're going to tell it that we want our fill, the lightness to be zero, which is black. Okay, now if we made that one, it's a black background. So we made that 0.4, it's a kind of a gray, just blending in with the yellow. 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, there we go. So a single pattern, and then you can play with the fill and the stroke um, and the scale and the rotation and get some multiple variations of these patterns which you can use anywhere. So now if I go to a new section, grab a new section, put that down the bottom here, stick some content in there, uh, maybe some rich text in there, uh, more Bob Ross, just give us some working space. Lots of Bob Ross in there. Now this section here, we want one of those backgrounds. I come up here and I start typing pattern. And here's my patterns. We want the waves. Here's our waves. Okay, we don't like the waves. Pattern. We want the hexagonals. Here's our hexagonals. So it's really, really simple to set up these patterns and just apply them as classes uh, using these um, utility classes. Um, so that's pretty much how you would do this and uh, I think it's really simple really powerful um, Play with it try even the multicolored ones if you want to so you can change colors in here change scales change rotations And get all the effects that you like very very simple to do with the bricks class system So hope you like this if you do hit the like and hit the subscribe. Thank you